because I expect neuropathy to be 40%, 45% easily. We are only getting 4%, 5%, so there's something wrong with that data there, obviously. The chronic ischemic heart disease, 3%. That's, uh, you know, a pretty good number for, uh, you know, so for every 100 uh, patients we see, 3 to 4% have uh, coronary artery disease. So this is why we always, uh, in a diabetic patient who has not had an echo TMT done, we always insist that they get an echo TMT done if they are over the age of 45 or over the age of 55. And a good percentage of them are TMT positive. And, and otherwise we would not have, not, I mean, we would not have known if uh, we had not done this. Next slide. Uh, again, uh, looking at this uh, type 2 uh, subgroup, um, in type 2 what you're seeing is 68% uh, of them had primary hypothyroidism. A pretty high group. And, uh, you know, again and again we're um, uh, looking at um, explanations for why uh, type 2 patients can have incidence of hypothyroidism. Mainly because they, they say a good percentage of them are obese. So there are some four or five explanations as to why obesity uh, or type 2 can uh, predispose to primary or um, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. If, if you want to discuss that, we can discuss that later, but that's why. But so we had a fairly high percentage of uh, people with uh, primary hypothyroidism, I mean type 2s, who had hypothyroidism. 27% um, of our patients are on insulin. Uh, whereas the rest of them are on some sort of OHAs. Um, I didn't, we really uh, couldn't look into, you know, uh, how many of them were on sulfonylureas, how, how many of them were only on metformin, how, how many of them were on pargin. So we can do that, but we didn't have time. So we just divided into insulin. And, and in insulin itself, how many of them were on analog insulin, how many of them were on basal, how many of them. We can do it, but it takes time. So for just for this presentation, I just pulled out uh, this data. And... Uh, this is like a final uh, plot of uh, how many of our patients, um, you know, uh, from uh, the period of, uh, it's almost two years, the data that we've been uh, collecting. Anyways, I'll do this next slide. This other slide. Okay, so uh, that's our data. Now let me just uh, give you a brief of how the workflow uh, works in uh, Silverlight. Like this, patient comes, uh, to the outpatient, um, uh, they can, it can be a walk-in, but nowadays uh, we've uh, started restricting uh, walk-ins like that because it would be very hard to set up an appointment because, uh, uh, you know, people by phone or previous appointments uh, would always, al already be there. So uh, if um, somebody walks in, then uh, we'll, we'll tell them that you just have to either see uh, the, you know, junior most doctor, get worked up and then go. A lot of people are not happy with that. They, no, no, we want to meet the consultant straight away. But the consultant's uh, uh, OP is full already. Uh, the you know the uh, uh, appointment schedules are all uh, full. Uh, so where can you squeeze them? So we've been having a little bit of a problem there. Um, but generally, this is how it works. Uh, come, uh, they can uh, either it will be mostly by a phone appointment or previously they would have been if it's a revisit they would have been uh, given the appointment uh, for that date. Then they come in, register. Once the registration takes place, uh, the, uh, they, they are, every patient goes to the vitals. I'll just show you. We have pictures of all that. Every uh, we don't see a patient without uh, vitals. Vitals means height, weight, um, waist hip ratio, and automatically the BMI comes in. Without this, uh, even if the patient comes today and then a patient comes tomorrow again, this, the, the patient has to do this because it, without vitals, it's very hard for us. Um, then uh, from there, uh, the patient goes to the physician assistant. The physician assistant, the new patients, uh, gets charted in. Means uh, the entire day, whatever the previous records, everything is uh, fed into the system. Then uh, uh, the, the patients brought to us. So our job is much easier because uh, all the notes, the relevant notes, would have been entered uh, into the uh, system by the physician assistant. Um, and then we go through it just to make sure that everything is in place but that will take only one to two minutes otherwise this would have taken about 15 minutes the entire history take uh, so the physician just has to take yes no yes no or uh, then enter the current medication and all those things um, then the consultation after the consultation whatever blood test have, has to be done sometimes we 
get them slotted in for a full comprehensive evaluation. We have various packages, uh, you know, just a diabetes eye checkup or a, a cardio diabetes checkup or, uh, you know, you get three, three, four. So they get slotted into one of those. Or some of them say, no, 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 we just want bits and pieces. So we'll do it accordingly. Then they go to the billing. Uh, from the billing, they go to the phlebotomist, blood drawn. From the, uh, this one, if there are other tests like ultrasound and uh, things like that, fibrometer versa lab, you say they uh, go there. Then with the reports, we see, uh, write a uh, advice and they go to the pharmacy and then they go home. I'll just tell you how uh, this works in, uh, in pictorially. This is our register. What we've done here is we've made it very cozy and comfortable for the patient because I've always noticed that, uh, you know, generally in hospitals they have to stand and, you know, queue and things like that. So we're here we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to sit them down and have some order uh, so they are comfortable and then they can transact um, uh, business, I mean, business in terms of give information regarding uh, whatever needs to be done. A smart card is printed for them. Next slide. So this is how the um, uh, the, the screen in, um, to the secretary would look like. They put all this in and, and we get to see this also in terms of appointments, how many appointments, at what uh, time frame it has been given and so forth. Um, there's even a, uh, this one for a double this one. So if, for example, uh, I have a patient at 8.30. Now I have another patient I have to squeeze in at 8.30. So we can kind of double it and then I can speed up, uh, you know, if otherwise I spend uh, 30 minutes a patient here because I have a, a situation, I can uh, speed it up and see the other patient as well and sort of thing. So morning when I come, um, I, I get to see the screen also, my appointment screen and accordingly I can uh, move around. Next slide. And from there, uh, they go uh, to the vitals. Uh, vitals, uh, you know, that weight machine that you see, it's a very accurate weight machine. And it, it, the error factor is something like 30 micrograms. Uh, you know, and what I was told is that even your weighing scale at home in the kitchens, women uh, weigh butter and things like that. That's supposed to be the most accurate uh, weighing system. Uh, it, the, the error factor is something like 30 micrograms. This, this weighing machine, uh, the error factor is close to that. It's that accurate. So every week what we do is we have like a 20 kilo uh, weight, uh, you know, the, the commercial weight. We put this and the reading will show 20.00. So that's how accurate our weight machine is. We also have, it's not in the picture, we have a, a stadiometer made by Sika, the German, uh, this one, highly accurate to uh, measure the height. But it's not for adults mainly, it's for our pediatric endocrine uh, patients that we use that. But we use it for adults because for the BMI. BMI is very critical. We do a lot of obesity, so BMI is uh, very critical. On this side, uh, you, you, it, you know, from there, the patient goes for uh, the BP measurement here. Every patient gets a BP measurement. We have like a really good, uh, that, that BP apparatus is called Big Ben. It's supposed to be a very, uh, very accurate machine. Next week. And this gets entered into uh, the system at the nursing station itself the BP, uh, the waist hip ratio, everything uh, comes on there, body mass index, everything comes on there. It gets entered in right there. Next slide. Then, uh, as I told you, they go to the physician assistant who will uh, sit with them and take uh, a detailed note on uh, this thing in terms of, uh, you know, the existing medication and uh, if they have, if they had undergone any previous surgeries, details of that. Um, allergies and so forth, all those things uh, they take note of. Next slide. This is how uh, they enter it in. Next slide. Then they brought to us. So what we do is we just go through uh, what the physician assistant is done very quickly. It doesn't take more than two minutes just to make sure that there are no syntax errors and all those things. And uh, and then we uh, kind of uh, uh, do a history physical on them, uh, you know, uh, look at the vitals again quickly. Uh, BP and everything else would have been done, but if we want to redo it, we do it again. Just do this one. And then we order off uh, S. Uh, now this, this is how, uh, uh, you know, finally it will look like the medication and stuff like that. Next slide. Then we order blood test. Um, that's all done online. You just order it. Uh, you know, you can just pick there's a drop-down list of all the tests that we have. We just tick it. 
uh, and then uh, we sent it across to the reception. Next slide. Next. So uh, what happens from there is they go to the reception, it gets billed, and then they go go to the phlebotomist. Phlebotomist uh, blood's drawn. Now, phlebotomy in the lab, they they get the same uh, orders that we marked out and which were built built for. They uh, they pick it up from there and draw a blood accordingly according to the requirement. Next slide. Now the lab uh, it has been interfaced with the system with the EMR. So uh, you know as and when uh, the blood turns out, that's a fully automatic uh, biochemistry machine. Uh, so as and when the blood uh, turns out uh, these results, it automatically gets into the system. Next slide. And then uh, the, it has to be verified. It's not enough to just uh, get the system captured into the EMR, but it has to be verified to make uh, to, to make sure that there are no errors. Okay. And this is how uh, uh, you know the uh, reports uh, automatically gets pulled into the system, but uh, then it's checked and uh, you know the reference ranges are mentioned. So if it is high low, it is marked, it is uh, flagged in uh, different colors. Right. Then uh, they come back to us with the reports. The reports are already there on the system, and we, uh, you know, uh, discuss uh, the reports with them. Next slide. We, we can even show them graphically that look, uh, when you came in, let's say, 19th of April, uh, this is what it is. 11th of May, this is this is this is probably uh, what 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 was that? Post meal blood sugars or something like that. And uh, then suddenly, uh, you know, what happened? You know, 8th of July, it's gone up to 400. So what do you think happened? Huh? So you can show them graphically. So they, they, they also start to think about it. Rather than if you just told them that, okay, you know, 400. So what was it last time? You know, you'll have to go back, find out what. But all this in just one screen, you can show it to them. Uh, and then even picking out the lab reports, you just have me to click it, it all comes up. Next slide. And then uh, after uh, after a uh, detailed discussion of, of their condition, what we do is we decide on the treatment. Uh, we write out a prescription. Okay. So this is how uh, the prescription is written out. It's all in E format. Okay. Then uh, it automatically goes to the pharmacy. The patient from uh, this one, uh, from, from our OP, can just walk to the pharmacy. Pharmacy uh, has the prescription already with them. Dispenses the prescription. That's right. What it will look like. It, it gets printed out for them also. And uh, our pharmacy has a separate counseling session where uh, you know somebody sits with them, explains to them how each of these medications has been taken, if it has been completely understood, and so forth. A lot of our patients will from there will go back to the diabetes nurse educator for insulin techniques and the rest of it. They have some doubts about glucometers and all that. They go back to the diabetes nurse educator from there. Okay. So OP patients go back home. Uh, next slide. So if, if the patient has to be admitted, uh, this, uh, the admission process starts. IP, uh, they go to a, a you know a, a IP billing session where uh, they get uh, you know the advances collected and all that gets admitted. Uh, we'll just come to that. Can you, can you go to the next slide? So this is like our IP admission counter. From here, uh, all of, uh, anybody needs, who needs admission will be sent up to the second floor to this counter and get admitted. In the master chart, you will know how many AC rooms, non-AC rooms, uh, ward, uh, ICU, all those things will be available in the master chart. And accordingly, you can end up admit in any one of those rooms. This is how we do our rounds there. Our hospital is completely Wi-Fi, um, and uh, we do our, our rounds on a computer. We don't have any physical notes there. Uh, our physician assistant comes with us, and he's in uh, either physician assistant or our junior doctor is in uh, the data in their respective uh, this one. And all the orders are also given there, and uh, the blood blood tests or whatever tests are also uh, ordered on the system.